Hello, welcome to the 523 Podcast. I'm Devin Corbello, and I have a special guest host today, John O'Donnell. Yeah. Welcome. Hey, thanks, man. That was a rockin' podcast intro, by the way. The music is, uh, is I think, top-notch for a podcast. Thank you. Um, Chris Moore, that does the podcast, the company, he created that for me, and he was like, it's like a fashion show. Like, Yeah, it's like, it's progressive, it's upbeat, right. but it's still, yeah. you know, edgy and, and fashion-y. And it's actually, like, this a song backwards, and it's kind of crazy how he did all that. Oh, but cool. Like, yeah, he's really great in doing that. Yeah, what so, a smart guy. We were just talking about how smart he was. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Moore on Good Barrel Media, Media. but um, he does all this. Cool. But thank you again for coming on. Thanks for uh, having me. Do you want to... Just introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm John O'Donnell. I'm the director of the Community Health Department at the Southwest Louisiana Area Health Education Center, which is the longest title in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, but I do a bunch of other stuff, too. I wear a bunch of other different hats in the community. and Yeah. That's, but yeah, that's who I am. Yeah, John is one of those people that everyone knows or at least heard of your name. Right. And they don't really... They no know one, you do a lot, but they don't know exactly what you do. Because yeah, no one knows. On it. Yeah, like I've I've done interviews before where people like say that I work for like the city or work for the state. <laughs> They're like, nope, nope, don't do any of that. No, but uh, yeah, nobody nobody really knows what I do. It's kind of kind of like a Batman kind of thing. Yeah, and that's a really great job title, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I know you're a big inspiration for me and oh, to um, give cool. back and you know the the impact that you have on the community at such a young age and yeah. you just are amazing and never stop and it's like he like runs marathons does triathlons <laughs> like the whole nine plus he has time to like make louisiana a better place i mean that's everybody has the time it's about finding the time and prioritizing the time right. and if it's important to you you'll find the time to do exactly. it. exactly so. i um i read this quote one time that you have the same amount of hours as you know the president right. and it like that was like a big like eye opener to me, like okay, I, I need to spend my day better. Than, right. So that's you. So right on that, like just. But don't neglect. Get out and do it. No, don't neglect yeah. yourself. Like make sure yeah. you're getting self care in because uh, you know there's there's a way to spin that where you just work yourself into the ground. And I've mm-hmm. done it. I mean I'm I may be doing it right now, but uh, <laughs> you got got to make sure that you take that time out and take those days to to chill out and watch Netflix for and, sure. You know, get a massage and get drunk and. You know, do it. Do whatever you need to do to just cut loose and help yeah. the moon. Yeah. So, just, is that what you? What's your go-to like relaxation technique or like self-care? Wow. Uh, I'm, I think I'm still finding it. Mm-hmm. I, you know, self-care is something that's always evolving for me, and it's something mm-hmm. that I really, I really struggle with. Yeah. Um, and uh, something I know that I need to get better at. But uh, tomorrow, I'm going over to the center for chiropractic. I'm getting a massage. Nice. Which is a big deal for me, yeah. And uh, you know, getting a, an adjustment and kind of spending some time to relax, and then, uh, but yeah, I think I think just doing that, and I also uh, I do a lot of baths. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, I know that's a weird thing to say, but I do like an Epsom salt soak, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a. Not a stranger to the bath bomb. Yeah, I like the I like the nice. idea of a good bath bomb. I don't think that men should be afraid of them. Not I think it'd be all. cool to start a company that made men's bath bombs and like men's men's bath products. That may be something new for Corbella's menswear. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't that be cool? And right. Like, so I, I bought the kit to do it off of Amazon. Nice. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's you know like I like a bath bomb, but I don't want to come out smelling like roses every time. It'd be cool if right I've got a sandalwood bath exactly. Bomb. Yeah. Anyway, I I do like bath bombs and I. <laughs> I've had had like you know the lavender, right? You know the little the the, the feminine scent, I guess, if you will, right? Uh, but I do, I don't know. I like baths too. Yeah. So I mean, who doesn't? Right. Right. It's just like you get a book and like a glass mm-hmm. of wine and you just chill out and like a hot. I mean, it's, it's yeah, awesome. It's relaxing and you kind of just like get a moment to yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. But also like seeing it in the shower too. And nice. So the shower is like. Gives me the opportunity to move it around, around while I'll sing. You know, <laughs> I think we talked about this on like one of the first or second podcast episodes. That's awesome. Which, by the way, this is our fourth or fifth one. Oh, cool. I'll have to correct this in post. So I'm in the top 10. Yes. Excellent. For sure. Very um, cool. Very excited about that. 
think, yeah, um, I really have had something in it kind of like left my mind real quick. That's okay. Cause we took like a weird turn in this podcast right out the gate. Like, let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about baths. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's not something we talk about. I know like growing up, my dad would always take a bath if he was sick. Yeah. Like it was always like showers and yeah. you knew he was sick if he was taking a bath. So it was, right. a, um, I don't know. I think men sometimes are afraid of baths and I think, yeah. Like you said, I don't. I don't think we should. I think it's a right. way to. I don't think relax. The, I don't and, think the baths should belong to one gender. I think mm-hmm. that throughout history, baths have been used as a very therapeutic thing. Exactly. Uh, in, in from a, a variety of different cultures, mm-hmm. uh, and so you know, why should why why should we as Americans have strayed away from that? Like exactly. We, just you know, cowboy up and get in the bathtub. <laughs> yes, and I hear they're healthier <laughs> too for you for some. Really, I don't know the exact science behind it, but I hear it's healthier than the shower, and I think it has something to do with like. I'm not sure. I guess it's oils. Your natural oils are like just cool. kind of like, yeah. I don't know. It sounds weird. Like now, yeah. That now I'm that you're saying it, like it, I don't want people to think that you're like marinating in your own right. juices. That doesn't sound good. But no. yeah, because I don't I'm think that's what's going on. No, I'm gonna have to fact check myself on that one. There you go. But, <laughs> that's great. So, John, yeah, um, you have a great beard. Thank you. Very one much. like other than like your. Um, your impact on the community, like right. your beard is something to be admired. Thanks. So like how long have you been growing it? So I started long. growing this beard uh, in Chile in wow. 2000 and it was October 2005. What made you do that? Uh, I was on a uh, an expedition leadership and travel uh, class semester. Mm-hmm. I basically did a semester down there learning how to lead mountaineering and sea kayaking expeditions mm-hmm. in adverse conditions. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, like we, we spent 50 days in the Andes Mm -hmm. where like, you know, you weren't shaven. Right. You know, so I just, I came out of the mountains, uh, with this beard Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, trimmed it up a little bit before we hit the sea kayaks and then spent another, another 50, hundred days, something like that, like sea kayaking down the Southern coast of Chile. Wow. And so by the time I got home, like mom and dad came and picked me up at the airport and I just had this like epic (laughs) beard and I was like, you know what? I I like this look. Like I think this is cool. And you know, it's kind of, kind of signified what, what, who I felt that I was. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, kind of rebellious, but Mm -hmm. also, you know, adventurous and dignified and, so I kept it. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's that's the the story of the beard. That's really cool. Mine, it's not that cool. <laughs> it's just I look better with the beard. And I think you look I, good. Yeah, I mean, your beard's your beard's rocking right now. Thank you. It's I was telling John and Chris before this. I was Chris has been encouraging me to grow it out a little bit more and make yeah. it longer. And I was trying to, and I was trimming it up yesterday, and the guard fell right. off of my trimmer. In the middle of my cheek, that so happens to me all the time. Yeah, and it yeah. gapped, it gapped it, and so I had to trim it down to make it look not as bad as right. it did before. So I guess eventually I'll get to that that level of beardness that you and Chris have. I don't even touch mine anymore. Like, really? I'll, yeah, I comb it and I style it and I do all that. But mm-hmm. like when it comes to trimming it up, I go to see uh, Stacy Hunt at Salon Mix. Really, and she does a phenomenal job, and she's really kind of like trained herself on my beard. Like she she's mm-hmm. she knows beards now. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and so she'll taper the sides up yeah. and kind of get rid of the flyaways. And I get this weird, like, Poseidon thing under my chin where it all starts to, like, flare out. And <laughs> so she'll trim that up and, and clear that up. But, yeah, like, I, it, it got nice. to a point where when I would do it myself, the guard would fall mm-hmm. off or, you know, I'd get distracted when I'm using the scissors or whatever. And yeah. I was just like, you know what, I'm not doing it. It's like you don't want to ruin all the, like, hard yeah, work that you right. into it. Yeah. And it's really, like, like with yours, you know, we were talking about it before we started. You mm-hmm. can't, you wouldn't have noticed that unless right. unless you said something. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with my beard, yeah. but I notice it, and it's right. that psychological impact of exactly. like I know I'm missing a part of my face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I've had I've had people I I've had this happen before, but I've also like trimmed like shaved my entire face clean yeah. shaven, and just for different reasons, and people like don't recognize me, now. right? And it's like who is that person or who is that 12 year old talking to me? And it's like, okay, I need the beard back immediately. Right. It's only for special occasions or for costumes. Yeah. I think the last time I shaved it for a costume was a couple years ago for Halloween. I was Lady Olena Tyrell. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Of course. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And so I had to, you know, shave my beard to make sure the makeup was good. Nice. You know, I had to look like an old lady. That's awesome. That's that's so far my favorite costume to date. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. 
but um, I struggle with costumes because there's only so many like characters that you can dress up as mm-hmm. when you have a beard like this. So that's true. I'm usually, yeah. just just Wolverine. Yeah, or, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, the bearded lady is also a good one. Oh yeah, I never even <laughs> thought about that. Yeah, um, from the Greatest Showman, you can do that. Yeah, there you go. But, so, is there any like? Like, so what do you use in your beard? Like, do you use beard oil? Shampoo? Yeah. Like, how do you... So I start with, uh, I start with beard oil, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that really just helps condition the skin under mm-hmm. your beard. Because the last thing that you want when you have a long beard is, like, beard dandruff. Right. Which is, you know, it's it's embarrassing enough to have dandruff coming out of the top mm-hmm. of your head, but have it coming out of your face. It's, right, right. And it's a lot more visible, too, when it's on the front of your shirt and not, like, exactly. on your shoulders. So I, I use a beard oil. Uh, I like to get mine locally. There's a bunch of farmer's market vendors that mm-hmm. sell it. They're going to sell you something that's higher quality than what you're going to get on Amazon anyway. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I like Hope Sopery has, a, like, a really good a local beard oil. Nice. Um, so I, I start with that, kind of work that in there, and then I'll also do, uh, just because it's so long right now, I'll use like a wax mm-hmm. or like a balm mm-hmm. uh, and put that on there, and that really just shapes it. And then mm-hmm. I take a bore brush, uh, like a hard bore brush, mm-hmm. and that's when I just brush it down and kind of shape it into the shape that it is. Nice. And the, you can get that at the farmer's market here on Saturdays and Tuesdays? Or? Yeah, Tuesdays is cash and carry. They have a yeah. bunch of vendors. and I mean, there's farmer's markets all over mm-hmm. the region. You can. And like I mean, you could throw a throw a rock on Facebook and find somebody making a locally made beard oil that's pretty good. So. Right, right, yeah, nice. And that maybe maybe another Corbello's menswear thing that we could work on that we could yeah, work on. Yeah, like I, I love whole local line of beard oil stuff for sure. And I have some now, but they're not local, so I'm always looking. Oh yeah, to do to support local. I love. Oh yeah, supporting local, and you're big into that too. And so you're from here. You're from Lake Charles, yeah. correct? And so. How has it changed in your lifetime? Oh man, and, I mean the the like the biggest change obviously is you know, and I wasn't here, you know, I, I grew up here. I left for a little bit mm-hmm. and I came back. Uh, and I, I think the the biggest change that I've seen was was Rita. Mm-hmm. You know, the hurricane just reset the whole, right. the whole community mm-hmm. for for better for worse. I mean, there have been things that we were able to reset that that were definitely better than before, but for the, you know a lot of ways that we we took a hard hit that right. we're still recovering from, yep. you know, um, that, and, you know, with the, with the expansion of the industries, mm-hmm. uh, we've seen a lot more Texas influence. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we've also seen, you know, a lot of, a lot of stress and pressure on our infrastructure and, and right. on our, our local facilities mm-hmm. because of these construction jobs that are coming in. So mm-hmm. I think those are the two, the to- two biggest changes that I think I've seen in the community Yeah, that, you know, the, uh, you know, small things have changed, right? Like, right, well, right, right? You know, we got we lost the water burger, and you know, mm-hmm. but like, unfortunately, the, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, RIP, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> water burger. If you're listening to this, we're ready for you to come back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the two biggest things that I think have been this Sassol project, the expansion of these industries, and then Hurricane Rita, and I think mm-hmm. that they're both on par with each other for in sure. terms of of how much change there's been. Right, right. And I remember Rita. I was younger and. That was like one of the turning points in my life to realize, one, how great this community is and how right. much we um, we kind of band together to rebuild it, and two, how something that we all like experienced it at one point in our, our life, a natural disaster, yeah. or with um, some of our grandparents, like a bi- bigger, I mean, multiple hurricanes mm-hmm. and natural disasters, and how each time it, it changes the community in a different way, and speaking of like the Sassol and like the kind of the economic boom that we're experiencing, the, um, the impact on that in a positive way and kind of a, a renewed sense of entrepreneurship and innovation yeah. and the, um, kind of the, the hope and like the excitement that yeah. you can just feel in the air sometimes. And it's really great to see that. Yeah. You know, I, I mentioned that I, I had gone away for a while and then came back. I was totally content to continue traveling the way that I was. I mm-hmm. spent a lot of time in Central and South America, and I, I was really happy there and mm-hmm. doing doing mission work and doing work that I felt was important. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Rita happened, and uh, that's really like seeing the community band together like that, and seeing everybody like seeing the need mm-hmm. in my own home uh, right. is is what I knew then. Like when I came home from that that trip to Chile, I knew then that I was going to have to stay. Mm-hmm. And so, were you here during that time, or was it after? No, I was here fact? here for the storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we 
took my mom, my grandmother, and my sister up to Natchitoches. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we kind of, you know, of course, everybody had to move around. Right. Uh, we lost power in Natchitoches and a whole bunch of other stuff and then wound up in Houston uh, and then came back over here, brought my mom and, and grandmother to Austin, then came back over here, I think it was three days after the storm because mm-hmm. my dad stayed. He was at the mm-hmm. hospital. He was at the doctor. And uh, my brother and I came back and then stayed with my dad uh, since then we we there was a blockade they wouldn't let mm-hmm. you through uh, right. and we had let we had a car it was a 2002 toyota camry mm-hmm. that was full of like two duffel bags with our gear in it mm-hmm. and then a whole back seat full of beer <laughs> and when he, the national guard stopped us there like right at the calgary uh-huh. parish border and they were like hey you know you guys can't come in here the, the parish is closed we're like oh no we're bringing supplies to dr o'donnell my dad he's uh-huh. at the hospital you can call the hospital Dude looks in the back seat, sees all this beer, and he was like, "So just the essentials." Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> but we gave him a case of beer, and then they let us through. So. Yeah, it's funny because like my dad has a similar story about. So we we evacuated to Shreveport with nice. some family, and he he was the first one to come down to kind of assess the damage, right. maybe like a day after the storm, two days, and like that's how he he got power back to our house. Oh yeah, in in the blue, which is like away from the city, so it's not essential, obviously. Right. But he bought he bought him beer. You right. know, he was like, "Hey guys, like, you know, can you help us out a little bit?" And yeah. um, luckily, on my dad's side, we didn't have a lot of damage. But that's good. Um, it was it's it's just great. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. the um, those were like you know you have like top ten like turning points in your life. Mm-hmm. And like nine eleven was one for me. Which every time I say this to people, they like freak out because they're like, "Oh, you're." Um, I tell them I was in the first grade whenever it yeah. happened. And they're like, oh, my God, you're a baby. Like, I was. I was you know, just thinking right. that. I was yeah. like, whoa. First and then, like, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry to make you feel old. <laughs> but um, <laughs> not my attention. But that, and again, it showed me how great community is mm-hmm. and, like, how great this nation is and how um, people band together. Yeah. Rita was another one. And then, um, you know, of course, this economic expansion. Yeah. Which kind of helped me start my own business and give me the um the courage and the yeah and the drive to to do that right so that's, that's cool and i love i love the success stories of mm-hmm. of, of this boom you know like like corbello's bids where but we've also got to be conscious that not all growth is smart right and we've got to make sure that we're growing smart so mm-hmm. making sure that we are encouraging and empowering these these local businesses and not getting sucked into these big national chains For that sure. are basically just going to fold and leave us with a big infrastructure investment as soon as the the boom is over. Right. Um, But, you know, the local businesses are going to stick around and that's really going to be the backbone of our economy that's going to keep us diversified and keep Mm -hmm. us taken care of. So we've got to make sure that we empower more businesses like yours, more small entrepreneurs and and get them the resources that they need. Yes, for sure. And so just from your experience and traveling and, Mm -hmm. and coming back from traveling and as a small business, what do you suggest, oh, I guess, a way to um, to continue that growth with your own company and, you know, yeah. to make a big impact in the community to where you stay for years and years to come? First and foremost, you got to run it smart. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got you to keep up with the QuickBooks. you got to keep the numbers run. you got to pay your taxes. Mm-hmm. You've got to make sure that you're putting money away so that you can have a sustainable business as soon as you get popped in the mouth. Right. You know, that's the, the thing that, I see more local businesses closing from is that one tiny hardship that happens, that one rock in the mm-hmm. rock in the road, and then they close because they weren't prepared for it. Right. So making sure that your books are squared away, making sure that you're taking care of your business and putting money away, and not mm-hmm. just not just oh you know we've got money in the bank account, so now we can buy this new right. you know gizmo that we needed to to do whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's first and foremost what it, the advice that I would give to small businesses. Mm-hmm. Second. You've got to diversify, like to get, get, you know, do what you do. Don't, don't stray from your lane because mm-hmm. I think it's really easy to get into a, a business and, and say, okay, well now that I'm selling these, I also want to sell these or, you mm-hmm. know, I'm a, I'm a bike shop, but now I'm going to sell cookies and then I'm going to do all this because mm-hmm. we've got the way to do it. No, like stick to what you're doing and just dial that in and mm-hmm. get better at that one thing. Mm-hmm. And then the third thing that I would say is diversify your market. If you're selling the same thing to the same people, at some point they're not going to need it anymore. Mm-hmm. And make sure that you're you're making yourself attractive and relevant to other aspects of the market, mm-hmm. and, and making sure that that those people are are participating as well. Yeah, so, that's yeah. that's awesome. 
that's the, the three biggest the three biggest mm-hmm. things that that I think local businesses can do, and the uh, the, the fourth thing is ask for help. Yeah. Uh, when I ran my business, uh, I, w- I was too proud to ask for help until it was almost too late. Mm-hmm. And when I finally did, it was a huge, a huge deal. I went to the mm-hmm. seed center and they really, they really took care of me. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, reach out to some mentors, reach mm-hmm. out to some other people that are running local businesses or that have run local businesses mm-hmm. and, and lean on them, have coffee with them, buy, buy them a beer, you know, just mm-hmm. get, get you, get you a mentor and, and, and lean on them. Yeah. So what was your business? I didn't realize you had started a business. Yeah, we had uh, we had we had several, uh, but the the main one was called Strong Point Enterprises, and we made outdoor gear. Okay. Um, and it, we we did pretty well. Yeah, we had a, a a good brand. We had a good market. We sold online, mm-hmm. um, and mostly mostly on Amazon. Uh, and we ran into an issue where, and had I had a better mentor, we would we would have probably been able to navigate this better. We ran into an issue where a lot of our products because we were very well recognized brand wise, mm-hmm. you know, throughout the internet. Um, and there were Chinese companies that were making counterfeit copies of what we were making mm-hmm. using our UPC code, our universal product code, and then wow. advertising on Amazon as if they were us mm-hmm. and stealing sales away from us. Wow. Um, and Amazon really was not interested in, in helping us with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't, we didn't know how to, how to solve it. Right. Um, and so we ended up just selling the company instead of. Oh wow! Yeah. So I mean, we, we still did okay. Right? Yeah. You know, we, you, you gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta know when to fold them. Right. Um, right. And I think that had we had some different advice uh, legally, and had I known mm-hmm. somebody that that could have helped us through that problem, we would have been okay. Um, but we didn't, and you know, we closed, and it's not something. You know, I think I'm proud of it. I, it's definitely right, for definitely sure. a cool place to have cut my teeth. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you learn so much. And how old were you whenever you started that? 20, 22, 23. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And who's you said we? Is that who? Kelsey. Kelsey. Oh, was, so your yeah, wife and yeah. Okay. That, that's the uh, the other advice that I would give you is don't start a business with your spouse. <laughs> some people some people can do it, uh-huh. and uh, you know we did. And Kelsey is a phenomenal business partner. She's a very very smart woman, uh, maybe the smartest that I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Um, but we just it was we we it was tough. It was tough yeah. on our relationship to yeah. to because that was that was our our full time job, mm-hmm. both of us, mm-hmm. um, and that was that was a tough thing to to do. Yeah, I mean you see like you know Chip and Joanna Gaines and yeah. all these. Few other people, I don't know if I don't know. I it, I would imagine that's really really hard on a relationship on a marriage, yeah. and it was tough for us. I think we were I think we were too young. Mm-hmm. We we could do it now, right? Uh, then we were we were too young mm-hmm. and uh, not not into the relationship enough to right. to have gained the skills that mm-hmm. we needed. Interesting. Yeah. That's, I'm learning a whole bunch, a whole lot about you. That's, I know we're getting like we're getting oddly personal, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> I like to take baths. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like you know, long walks on the beach. Right. That, yeah. Um, Can- awesome. Candlelit podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so you you travel a lot, and you say that you love South America. Is there any other place? That you would go, or that you want to visit, that you have not visited yet. My big thing right now is vacation in my backyard. Really? Yeah, like there is so much in Louisiana to mm-hmm. visit, and it's so important for us economically to just you know go go take a weekend trip to Lafayette yeah. or go to Manny. Mm-hmm. You know, like all these rural rural. I mean, even Allen Parish has some really awesome sure. stuff going on. But like that's there's so much in Louisiana that I haven't done, mm-hmm. and now my job now is statewide, so I'm traveling a lot mm-hmm. through Louisiana and just just getting to know these these communities all over. There's so many cool stuff. Mm-hmm. That, like so, just uh, yeah, I really want to just take more take more backyard vacations, and mm-hmm. so I've got a trip coming up. I'm doing a race up in uh, it's outside of Shreveport. It's called the Screaming Monkey. It's a, tra- mm-hmm. a trail run, and it's at the National Chimpanzee uh, Rescue. Wow, which is in Louisiana. I had no I idea. Didn't- didn't know we had that either. So they rescued chimpanzees from like biomedical research mm-hmm. or whatever, the retired chimpanzees from like the circus or whatever. Right. And right. they've got this island out there where huh. they, they've got caretakers, they're well mm-hmm. fed, but they can just live their lives out in the trees in the forest and it's surrounded by a moat mm-hmm. and there's a trail system that runs around the moat. Huh. That's why it's called the screaming monkey because there's chimpanzees right. like yelling at you the whole time. But like who knew? Like that's the type of like little gems yeah. that we have all over the state. That's really really yeah, cool. Yeah, so I'm 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 real big on like Louisiana travel mm-hmm. right now. Well, I know, and I saw this on Facebook yesterday, but um, 
someone shared this video of the Cash Cab, which is one of my favorite game shows. Yeah, the Bridgestone and, Museum exactly. was on there. Yeah, Tom and, Tom Trahan was is the yeah. director. He's doing such tremendous things over there. And like this national uh, this national show of this like new based in New York, or right. Chicago, and like they're talking about a little museum in Sulphur that I'm sure, unfortunately, a lot of people have not visited, or at least it's been a while. Right. And so I thought that was really neat because I do I love local travel and like yeah, kind of. Yeah being a tourist in your own state and because I really do think that Louisiana has some of the best cities and towns yeah. and each one that I've gone to and they just each one has a different feel and a different vibe and yeah. I think it's really neat and um for Louisiana we have a lot of festivals too and that's a great way to like kind of mm-hmm. go and like visit these cities to visit the different festivals and so right. totally with you on that just, yeah and you know New Orleans is great I love New Orleans mm-hmm. New Orleans is like a second home for me get out of New Orleans Right. You know, like, go, go see some stuff. You mentioned the Brimstone Museum. One of the coolest days I've ever had in southwest Louisiana was when I went, Caitlin Gallagos dragged me over to the, uh, mm-hmm. she was filming some something for the CBB mm-hmm. uh, to the, the Boudin uh, Festival over there. Boudin Wars. Nice. Yeah, and it's at the Brimstone uh-huh. Museum. And, like, the Brimstone Museum is so cool in and mm-hmm. of itself, but then they've got all this Boudin there, and there were there were people that drove in from Minnesota. Wow. I was sit- Yeah, I was sitting there, like, talking to this, this really nice elderly couple that like mm-hmm. drove their RV in just for this boot and wars from Minnesota and mm-hmm. you know make it's part of the stop on their their trip but yeah like go, so awesome. go to sulfur sulfur is cool right. man sulfur is not not at all right I, I, I don't want to I don't want to say that it's not it's not as bad as people think, you know, <laughs> but. I know and speaking of like Rita that's you know our, my mom's house was damaged in the storm so I had mm-hmm. to redo that and so and I lived in sulfur for about six or seven months after the storm and it's it's really neat. There's a different set of people there. Yeah. Um. And you wouldn't think, you know, from living in like Iowa and in like Charles, that there's right. like a completely different vibe yeah. right across the river. But there is, and yeah. it's and it's really neat. And they just have a a sense of community that's like really admirable. And right. Um. And they have a just they they do a lot of a lot of things that it's big. It's small enough to where it still feels like a hometown, but big mm-hmm. enough to where it has the options to um, do these big things. Like I know they had like snow, like around um, Christmas time, they had, like snow in the park or, yeah. and it was re- like, I was so excited as like a, a kid, like I think fifth or sixth grade. Right. And, um, but then it was like um, the little foam peanut. Oh yeah. Things. yeah, yeah. Um, but it was, it was really neat to see everybody out there. And so, Totally agree. That was yeah. my point. All and of that. An- another <laughs> another shout out to Caitlin Gallagher. She scored for the uh, it's Christmas under the oaks is what That's you're talking about exactly. Yeah, it's, and it's a beautiful beautiful festival and they, it snows which mm-hmm. is so cool. But she she got bag of donuts to play Christmas under the oaks How last cool year. Is that? Oh, yeah. I love bag of donuts. They they're really good. I saw them at a Mardi Gras ball this past year for the first time. Oh yeah. Um, I heard a lot about them and how they each dress like as a different like right. rock legend and. That was really neat to see, and so they're shout out to them. They're yeah, they're they're, they're one of those like, they're one of those Louisiana bands that has like literally rocked my face mm-hmm. off. Yeah, you know, now, not to not to take anything away from the flamethrowers who are my favorite. Just want to put that out there in, into <laughs> podcast are, land, right? In case in case Logan or the Darbones or anybody's listening, you're, you'll, can, you'll can still you'll still my number that. one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they're pretty great too. They're um, speaking, and I, I I tell this a lot to other people. Um, I don't know. Um, Joseph or um, his wife, which Dominique. 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 Yeah. Um, and I met Logan at, at the, your Friendsgiving. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And but I, the first time I saw them, it was at Fashion Gives Back a cool. few years ago. And again, if you listen to this regularly, you know that it was a big inspiration to starting right or getting the wheels rolling on this for my own business. But she was pregnant and like just rocking out and right. like, I'm sure she was like eight or nine months pregnant. I don't yeah. know, but she was like all belly and like, she was just like killing it. And like the whole, the whole band was killing it. Yeah. But like, she was just like Beyonce up there, you know? Oh, yeah. And like, just, I was like, Oh my God, I hope she does have the baby like right here. on stage. <laughs> um, But like that, like from that moment, like sh- they've just been like, they just like jump like 10 yeah. notches on my radar. And it's just She's such a cool mom too. And I really, it's really been 
because yeah, I've known I've known both Joseph and Dom for a very very mm-hmm. long time, and it's really cool to see them both coming into their own as parents. Mm-hmm. But like one of the coolest things ever was uh, you know just watching her on stage, and they'll put headphones on Bo so his, mm-hmm. his little ears don't get hurt, and he's just up there happy like rocking out with them. That's so you awesome. know? Yeah, and I, I love that. I love that that kind of socialization when I see people bringing their kids into into their job and into yeah. the, especially when that job is so creative like right. this is and it's music and mm-hmm. exposing kids to music I think for good, sure so. and I love I love the arts and y'all know this if you listen um, and I think it's very important for you know for education and I right. think it, it's it's a it's a big thing in our community that we kind of get behind local artists and local yeah. um, things to where it draws out the arts and I'm, I'm on the board for the Arts and Humanities Council oh great and we we um, from being on that board for a few years now, I kind of see all that, and it's really great to see yeah. how, for you know, live at the lakefront, which is coming up next month, and which we have. Speaking of bands, we have a lot of cool bands coming oh, up. Oh man, yeah. Um, we have a Grammy night where like all the bands are like nominated or have received a, yeah. a Grammy Sean award. Sean Hardwin, I think, is going to be there. Yeah, and like Wayne Tubes, and um, I think um, Mickey Smith. Smith yeah. yeah, which is really cool that in Louisiana and like locally that mm-hmm. we've had an impact you know, internationally with the right. Grammy Awards. So anyway, I love that our community is very much behind yeah. arts and local arts. And yeah. I don't I don't think we always have been. No. But I love this new wave that's mm-hmm. happening. And I think I think that wave is really being driven by Matt, our friend Matt Young. Yes. Uh, you know, Ashley Waldrop is doing a tremendous job. Mm-hmm. The the folks at Magnese, Lynn Reynolds, Bridget mm-hmm. McDaniel, uh, and Devin Morgan over there at the uh, Imperial Calgary yes. Museum and Tom Trahan, like all these guys kind of kind of it's like the it's like this perfect storm of arts right. and humanities and it's a really, really exciting time to be here because I, I think we're on the cusp of something really cool in terms of art. Yes, for sure. And I love theater and I love acting and I mm-hmm. think that's really, really one of my favorite and one of the only pieces of art that I can actually do, <laughs> you know, because I can't like sing or like draw or anything. But I, re- I really would love to see that more so in our community. I think it's like slowly getting there with yeah. a lot of our local theaters. Yeah. And with the the um, Living Him- History Cemetery tour that we did. So cool. Past... Um, October yeah. and I was an actor in it. It was really neat to see yeah. all these these people get behind that because that was such a great event. It was a first yeah. event and Matt Young and Erica McCready and Trent Grimion like kinda helped put all this together. Right. And like everyone that didn't get to go was upset that they didn't get to go and everyone that went was like, Are you gonna do this again right. next week? And we're like, uh no. Right. But so it's it's like you said, it's a perfect storm of yeah. all these artistic people and art lovers and yeah. People that appreciate art are getting behind artists here in town. Well, and I'm glad you said that about about stepping out of your comfort zone and, and acting and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I, I I think that you probably could paint or do you know write or whatever. Um, but somebody told me, or uh, I was having a conversation uh, with some friends from Lafayette, mm-hmm. and uh, inevitably the conversation when we're talking about Lafayette and Lake Charles always turns to you know why is why is this art and music scene in Lafayette thriving more than it is in Lake mm-hmm. Charles? And somebody said something that has always stuck with me, and they said that it's because people here are braver, mm. which I don't think is true. But there are more people willing to step out of their comfort zone mm-hmm. that, that might sell insurance or might be a public official, you know, something. Right. But they also paint, mm-hmm. and they have they they put their resources behind having a gallery opening, or mm-hmm. you know, they go like you did and went and acted in the the cemetery tour. Mm-hmm. So they just have more people producing more art. Mm-hmm. We've got that here. We do. You know, we've got my friend Kyle McMillan is has just started drawing again after mm-hmm. taking a little bit of a, a hiatus. Really, that's awesome. Yeah, and he's drawing these incredible like wood drawings <laughs> and wood carvings of ducks and all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's just get people to make art. You know, and yeah. let's just empower people to make art. And if it sucks, it sucks. Who cares? I mean, it's all know, subjective. Yeah. You know, it's all like just just do it for sure. And like speaking of that, like one of my favorite movies is Titanic. Yeah, and I, I remember Titanic. that scene and. Um, where Rose has like all these Monet paintings, right? And her fiance Cal is like, "Oh, he's not gonna make it big." Right? And it's like, um, yeah, he's like one of the most famous artists on earth. Yeah. And it's just really neat to see that whether you think it's art or not, doesn't matter if other people think still if, art. If it's creative and if it makes you feel good, right? It's all about expression. Mm-hmm. Just express yourself. Same thing with fashion, like. That's exactly. My, yes, let's bring it back to the right? point of the podcast. And that's one of my big deals is expressing yourself and making sure that 
your personality shines through the way you dress. Yeah. And if you feel confident, then right. then it's done. That that's right. what fashion is, yeah. I think. I think that people are really capable of, of being their best and doing their best when they feel their best. And mm-hmm. they've got to look their best in order to do that. For sure. Or they've got to feel like they do. Yeah. You know. Exactly. And that's like my big thing. If you feel good, if you look good, you feel good. Yeah, right. Hold on. And it just it opens up a lot of opportunity for other things in your life, I for think. For sure. Like maybe being creative in your artistic ways. Yeah. Or, you know, giving back to the community in some kind of way or like you know, speaking to your local official about something yeah. you want to see changed or I love the idea of, like. of somebody yep. feeling confident in the way that they look and that giving them the confidence to then express themselves artistically. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really that that's a really cool idea. For sure. And I was talking to Megan Green, which is a friend of ours. Yeah. We'll have another shout out too. to somebody that's making art happen in the community. Right. And yeah. she um she has a show going on now at her alma mater in like Missouri, I think. Uh Kansas, I think. Kansas. Yeah. And it's really neat to see that, you know, local art here is being produced nation, you know, is being right. sent nationwide, right? And being seen by people from other cities that don't know anything about Lake Charles, yeah. And so, just shout out to Megan, you're doing great. Yeah, and, good job, keep going. And she and she is very, um, very stylish too. And she is. I was talking to her the other day about it, and she just she looks good, and I, and she was. It's just great to see that that she's like just kind of confident in herself and the way she dresses and the way she holds herself. Yeah, and that she's a teacher, one, right. um, and an artist too, and she has a really cute dog too. Yeah, <laughs> that's three. <laughs> the trifecta right there. I saw her like I was driving downtown, coming back home uh, from a meeting yesterday, and I saw her and Amanda walking mm-hmm. the dog, and I I saw them from like. 200 meters off uh-huh. and so where you could just see but you could tell like just how you could see a Ma- uh, Megan's style uh-huh. from that far away and I knew it was them like even though I couldn't see faces or anything I knew it was them just because I could see her yeah. style from that far and away it, and it's funny she's on the arts and humanities board with yeah. me and so is um Greg Bass which there are yeah. two new members of the board this oh year. wow powerful additions I right mean, yeah. and I didn't know any anything about them before this, and we had our first like orientation meeting. They sat right next to each other, and they were dressed the same. Oh, that's cool! Like you know, jeans, shirt. Um, right. They had, have a similar haircut, and I've told them this before. And I was like, I thought y'all were like siblings or twins, <laughs> and like, are that you've been friends forever? And like, they're like, no, we just met like just then. That's awesome. And um, but now they're like really good friends, and it's like every I time hope they I, become best friends, right? Like, yeah, and. I was I, I leaned over to Emily Porsche and I was like, "Hey, are they like brother and sister or married or like what's their deal?" Because like they they dress just do alike. They, do they share a closet? <laughs> right. <That's awesome. laughs> and um, so and I've told them that before, and they were like, "It took it took me a while to actually yeah. tell them that because I didn't know if it would offend one them offend them. Two, I was just wasn't as close to them at that point. Yeah. And then um, at our Christmas party, we <laughs> I told them, and they just thought it was hilarious. That's awesome, but. So, and you you mentioned Megan being a teacher. I think it's so important that we have people that that stand up in front of mm-hmm. kids to instruct them with that that bold sense of style. Also, for to sure, like, to show kids like, hey, like it's okay to just be you and right. be bold in what you you wear. And mm-hmm. when you do that, you look good, right? Because I mean, what like Megan Megan is a very bold fashionista, yeah, uh, but she always looks phenomenal. She does, you know, and I think it's so important to have some have an example for kids that that's like that for sure. And I never even thought of it like that, but yeah. that's a great way to put it. And I think teachers are great. And I, I, we mentioned this last time, but um, and I, I think we need that. We just need somebody who's bold, who's yeah. just being themselves, teaching the youth of America to show them that right. they can be whatever they want to be, right? And as long as they're happy, as long as they're making a positive impact. Then yeah, they can be whatever for sure. Yeah, got to pay our teachers more. Just get a political for a second. Yes, but for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we can talk back about fashion. Yeah. Um. So, what's your favorite like fashion trend or something that you would like to see come back? Or man, so I'm I'm very traditional in my fashion mm-hmm. choices. You know, like I I don't think that we need in in men's fashion. I don't think that we need to improve on a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I think that guys like Paul Newman and and uh, Robert Redford and uh, Steve McQueen and those mm-hmm. guys like had it nailed in. Like you mm-hmm. know, you can 
you can look good in slacks and a polo and a button down, solid colors, mm-hmm. pinstripes. You know, you don't need to go crazy with it. There's, yep. you know, I, I appreciate a lot of the trends that are happening in men's fashion right now, mm-hmm. but there's just no substitute for the originals. No, the classic yeah. looks the are yeah. always great, and they're always they're always in style. They're right. always a good go to. They never go anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a testament to those trends. At one point, right. there were trends, and now they're just fashion staples. Right. They're, you know the classic polo, the um, the button down shirt, the right. tie, the um, you know the khakis and a and a sweater kind yeah. of thing. Like it's just you look clean, you look good. Right. And I, I try and to. If it's not I, broke, don't fix, fix right. it. Right. And I, I try to mentor you know younger guys that are entering the workforce a lot because mm-hmm. then they come to me and they ask me you know like hey like what I mean I I know that I need to dress for this job I don't know how to do it. And just giving them like a, a list of ten items that you can make really any outfit mm-hmm. with. You got to have a blazer. You mm-hmm. got to have a. You got to have a navy blazer, mm-hmm. right? And whether that's got gold mu- not buttons on it or whatever, you just you got to have a navy, navy blazer. Yeah. Uh, two, you got to have a, a nice fitting polo. Mm-hmm. Three, you got to have a nice pair of slacks, and you have to have at least one suit that's not navy. Right. Right. So you navy suit is always the go to. Mm-hmm. You got to you know black suit great. You got to have that for funerals, but right. you got to have a navy suit and probably a gray suit too. Mm-hmm. You get those things and you're. you're for sure, and it, I couldn't you, set up better myself. Right. Yeah. You, you throw a blazer onto anything, like you can wear t-shirts and jeans, which I frequently do. And my, uh, if my boss is listening to this, he's gonna think <laughs> this is funny because he's always giving me crap about wearing a, a t-shirt, jeans, cowboy uh-huh. boots, and I'll just throw a blazer over it. Uh-huh. Tuck a pocket square into it, and you're good to go. Yeah, you know, you, you, you put a blazer on a lot of things and look okay. For sure, for sure. And you also wear boots a lot, like yeah. So like. Do you have, how many pairs of boots do you have? Do you have a lot or you just no. have that one pair? That no, you so I've got uh, – I started wearing cowboy boots in college because it was functional. Mm-hmm. You can slip them on, but they still look semi-formal. Mm-hmm. You know, they look good with jeans. They look good with a suit, you know, just because of the, the variety of different outfits that you could wear cowboy boots with. Mm-hmm. And they just they they're freaking comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've got, I've got three pairs of boots right now. Uh, I've got a, a brown pair. Mm-hmm. I've got a black pair. And then I got another brown pair that's a little more casual. Mm-hmm. That's all you need. Yeah, you know, you don't. That, that's the other cool thing about cowboy boots is they're they're so tough. They're not going anywhere, mm-hmm. and you don't need a whole lot. You don't need you know different styles or anything. Mm-hmm. You just keep it simple. And I think like those are one of those um, investments. It's like people oh, yeah. say that you know fashion is, is an investment in most cases. Like there's a quick fashion like Forever Twenty One and like right. you know fast fashion. I think that's right. what they call it. Where those those pieces won't last, right? But like with like boots or like a good leather jacket, good leather jacket, or yeah, something that costs a lot of money right now, but like will right. last you for years and years to come, right? And for boots, you know, they last a while. You can get them resold and still have the same pair of boots, and right? It's it, those are great investments, and I totally believe in fashion investments. Yeah, that just get better with age. That's my my jam right now is like a I want to keep things simple. Mm-hmm. B I want things to to fit well. I think that I think that there's not enough attention in men's wardrobes to fit mm-hmm. and tailoring because there's you can have a bad shirt, but as soon as you get it cut to 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 fit your body type, you're gonna look a whole lot better. For sure. It's gonna be a good shirt. Um, but also investing in pieces in the way that I, the way that I I quantify this is, will I be able to give this to my kids? Mm -hmm. You know, is this something that I would be proud to hand down Mm -hmm. and will it still be relevant when I hand it down? You know, like that leather jacket or those boots. My aunts were just recently in town. Actually, I just finished up brunch with them. They're in town from Texas. Uh, and one of my aunts asked me if I wanted my grandfather's old cowboy boots that oh, are wow. still like, still look great, still kicking. And they're mm-hmm. probably 40 years old. Yeah. And of course I said, yes, for sure. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, his feet are swollen or they've grown or something and he can't wear them anymore. He's still, dude's 94 years old, still working his own cattle ranch. Wow. He's, yeah. Just That's a amazing. badass. Yeah. Just a, a legend. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, like investing in pieces that, you know, my kids, my grandkids mm-hmm. are going to gonna want you know like it's kind of straying away from like yeah you can go to old navy and get like a nice nice polo but it's gonna it's gonna be in the trash in two years because it's right. gonna fall apart right so. and was it worth that 30 dollars that you spend on exactly like, yeah. exactly so. when you yeah i mean when you can spend 50 dollars on a shirt instead of 30 dollars on a shirt but mm-hmm. you're not gonna need to buy another shirt for five more years right you gotta you gotta yeah. look at that for sure so one last question before we end yeah um, i asked all my guests this what is a book or books that you're currently reading that you know, 
like what are they? So just oh, you know, okay. So just just yeah. a book. And it I, doesn't, I, and it doesn't I, have to be anything to do with fashion, huh? No. And I know you read a lot. I read a lot. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out which yeah. book I want to talk about right now because I have like six going on at once. <laughs> that's a, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm reading a book right now called uh, How Bad Do You Want It? Mm-hmm. It's a book by a guy named Matt Fitzgerald. Okay. Um, and it is a breakdown of uh, different sports psychology issues in endurance sports mm-hmm. and. Some like basically looking at you know we we know how to physically train for things right like mm-hmm. we're we're at the pinnacle of physical training science right what's holding us back from achieving things like a two hour marathon mm-hmm. or or whatever is are these weird mental blocks mm-hmm. um, and you know what are they why do they exist you know like mm-hmm. physiologically like or you know what like why why are we scared of certain things what mm-hmm. what's in our DNA that teaches us to, to hold back here mm-hmm. um, and then coming up with mental exercises to beat that, to really push yourself mm-hmm. further and, and achieve some, some epic stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. So that's to the, check it out. That's the one of the books that I'm reading. Yeah. Right now, so. so you, you do read a lot. Yeah. One last question. Yeah, what yeah. is your advice to someone who wants to start reading more books? Lean on your local library. Okay. Like the library in Calcasieu Parish has these incredible resources. Mm-hmm. We do. Uh, there's an app called Hoopla mm-hmm. and you download this app on your phone, your Kindle, your iPad, whatever, and you put in your library card number mm-hmm. and you have digital access to everything that the 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 Calcasieu wow. Parish Library mm-hmm. has. So audio books, uh, uh, digital books, comic books, movies, mm-hmm. TV, like whatever. You can stream it to your device or download it. It's and all then, free. Yeah. It's all free. It's, your your tax is already paid for that. Yeah. So it, it, no need to go on Amazon or anything like that. Just go to the library, get your Hoopla app, and that's that's how you should start reading more. That's and amazing. audiobooks, like pop yeah. something in the car and you'll get it done. Cool. Yeah. Well, again, John, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having it's me. It's been a great episode, yeah, one of my favorites. Been, this is and, cool. Yeah, we'll have to have you back for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. And is like, so for, you work for a nonprofit. Is there a yeah. way for people to reach you if they need or yeah. if they want to help out in any way? Like, yeah, you can check out our website at swalahek, S W L A H E C dot com. Uh, or you could look me up on Instagram. I'm at John O'Donnell. Perfect. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, thanks and for having me, man. For sure. See you next time. All right. All right. Bye. After dinner last night, I got in bed and she's watching it, and it was like the Red Wedding episode. And I was like, "No, no!" I was like, "I will not watch this before I go to sleep." Not like you again. put something else, so you put Mrs. Maisel on right now. <laughs> yes. <You know? laughs>